All right, so we're two months away or so from opening day of rifle season, so we thought we'd come at you with some rifle hunting tips. First off, if you're gonna go rifle hunting, huge element of that is your rifle. So uh, first things first, you wanna make sure your rifle is set up properly. And um, that's a whole nother topic. So I'm just gonna kind of gloss over a couple of the highlights of some things that I've noticed in the past that have really kind of been detrimental to a hunt. Firstly is zeroing your rifle. So a lot of guys wanna zero their rifle at 100 yards because that's just the way they were taught to do it or something that seems right. Um, we zero our rifles at 200 yards uh, just because if you zero your rifle at 100 yards, you're, by the time you get to 400, depending on the ballistics of your cartridge, you're gonna see you know, 16 inches of drop or something like that at 400 yards. If you zero at 200, there's like a negatable amount of drop at 100 yards or rise, you know, an inch maybe. And then at 400, you're only dropping like eight inches instead of 16 or 17 inches. So it really, you know, kind of flattens the curve <laughs> and um, gives you a, a longer reaching um, ballistic rather than having this big arc out there. So less adjustment on the turret, essentially. The second tip would be um, most of the time when we're deer hunting, we're deer hunting at altitudes different from where we live. This is super important because altitude, sea level altitude is where you, where I sighted in my rifle, where I always sight in my rifle because that's how I live at sea level. So here's a quick explanation of what happens at different altitudes versus sea level altitude. So the, the higher you go, the thinner the air is. So the thinner the air is, the less drag you have on the projectile you're firing. So um, in, in my case, the year that I learned this is uh, I was shooting a deer at 430 yards, uh, which in Western hunting isn't a super far shot. I mean, it's a good shot, but it's not way, way out there. Um, you, you should expect to shoot a deer between three and 400 yards routinely. So mm -hmm. that's why the 200 yard zero is pretty important. But I was shooting a deer at 430 yards and I had zeroed at sea level and had calculated all my dope chart off of sea level. Um, so I planned on a certain amount of clicks at 400 yards while I shot at the deer and I held right in the heart and hit it right in the spine, just barely hit the spine of the deer. And luckily I dropped in his tracks getting that spine shot. But I learned a huge lesson there and afterwards I started doing some research and realized that because the air is thinner at altitude, your bullet travels with less fall. So at 500 yards, instead of my projectile dropping 21 inches, it was only dropping 16 inches or roughly therein. Um, so it gives you a good idea. Look up the ballistics on, on what your rifle is going to shoot at different altitudes and that way you can, you can adjust your elevation for that properly. The cool thing is nowadays uh, most ammo makers have their own app so you can go in the app, download the app, go in the app, put in your, your cartridge and then your elevation that you're going to be using it in, uh, your zero range, all that stuff, and it'll give you a chart that you can actually print out and bring with you in the field, use it to side in, and it'll give you your, your projectile drop at different yardages. And practice. It should go practice. without saying. I mean, <laughs> shoot at every yardage you plan on shooting a deer at. So mm -hmm. if you plan on, you make a limit for yourself. I'm not going to shoot a deer past 500 yards, and then practice to 500 yards routinely, and make sure you're comfortable. In terms of hunting strategy, during rifle season, there are three main factors that affect deer patterns. So you have food, water, and pressure. So most of the seasons in California are not during the rut. Or normally you would add that fourth element, but we don't hunt during the rut. So those are the three elements that are gonna affect the patterns of the deer. All three you can use to your advantage. So when you're hunting, like for example, in A zone, it's really hot, it's really dry, uh, water is crucial. So finding those watering holes that have fresh sign around them, um, and then finding, finding your, your feeding sources is really key too. So especially during opening weekend and closing weekend of rifle season, you have a lot of activity in the woods. So a deer might not have heard vehicles consistently for 10 months, and all of a sudden you have hundreds of rigs piling into the woods, guys hiking, guys are sighting in their rifle, which is stupid, don't do that by the way. Um, not during season. Yeah, not during season. Do it before season. <laughs> before you get out to the field. All of that affects the patterning of the deer. So when you're, especially when you're looking at a new area, maybe you got drawn for a zone you've never hunted and you're trying to figure out how to approach this zone. Well, what you want to do is look at your high traffic areas where guys are going to be coming in and then look for escape routes away from that. So obviously your bucks are going to want to stick to heavy cover. Now I've watched rigs come through an area 
and then as soon as the area clears, I'll see deer cross the road from heavy cover to heavy cover. So they're smart. They know what they're doing. They know how to escape. So what you want to do is, like for example, if you see a cut, a good drainage where you'll, you'll have activity and you have a road at the bottom, well, you know the deer are either going to move down across the road and away or up over the ridge and away. That's just one example. Look for escape routes uh, of heavy cover and hunt edges. So you'll see transition areas like, for example, between a burn and a heavily forested area or between a clear cut and dark timber. Those edges are, are where they like to transition. And the, the, I mean, and that's pretty basic hunting. I mean, no matter what kind of hunting, if it's archery or rifle, you're going to be doing that. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about rifle is you can get yourself away from the deer far enough in a spot where you have a like visual advantage mm -hmm. and you can kind of really just let your glass do the walking. Don't be charging around in there, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of sit back and watch things because you have that distance you can cover with the bullet. Yeah. The other key would be to move slow. So, before you move slow though, find fresh sign. So you can move slow through an area that's not holding deer and just doesn't do you any good because there's no deer around. So you're gonna find pockets that hold a lot of deer. That's been our experience in California. California is a little bit of a, of a unique dynamic because there's a lot of hunting pressure. We have a lot of hunters. Um, not a lot of great habitat. And not a lot of great habitat. Yeah. And so there's a lot of areas that look uh, deerish, um, but they don't hold deer. So the habitat's not prime. Maybe forestry companies have uh, sprayed herbicides so there's not that seral forestry to feed from. So find fresh sign, and when you do, move slow. So in my experience, I've been sitting and glassing, and I've watched guys just move too fast and miss deer. I've seen it multiple times. So slow down, and like Ben said, let your, let your glass do the walking. So spend a lot of time glassing, look at those transition areas, look at those uh, escape routes, and, and see if you can get in before the season, do some scouting and see where the fresh sign is. Now, like I said, pressure is gonna affect that, but if you know where they're holding prior to rifle season, and then you can map from there your escape routes. You might have bucks holding in um, kind of your more open areas, your easy to access feeding areas, but as soon as that pressure hits, they're gonna move away from that. So that's where you can set up and be in those transition routes to ambush them. It, always if you can scout in advance and figure out where their summer feeding habits are, that kind of helps you to then look at the map and kind of route away that they're gonna escape from that area and the next best feeding habitat downrange from that, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, and then one last tip, it's something we ran into a couple years ago. We didn't have the opportunity to hunt um, our zone until later in the season. So we'd already had some weather come through, um, a couple of cold fronts. When we got up there, all the coloring had changed. So leaves were dropping off, shrubs were dying because there had been several freezes, and there were no deer. Now normally this area holds a lot of deer, and they were just gone. So we didn't anticipate vegetation turning that fast. So if you're going to hunt later in the season, maybe look at some lower elevations that aren't as affected by weather changes. So something to look out for when you're hunting rifle season is a lot of times, and it depends on the mountain range you're hunting in the particular area, but a lot of times deer migrate during that later time of the year. Um, so keep your eye out for, if you can find where they summer, a lot of times that, that really reduces the equation because you can look downhill from where they summer and kind of map out a route. Deer you generally, I mean, sometimes they'll go over hills to get to places, but generally they'll travel. When they're going to migrate down to lower ele elevation, they're not going to go up to go down. They're going to kind of skirt around mountains and, mm -hmm. and go through drainages. So just look at those natural kind of choke points and natural pathways that lead them down to lower elevations. And then you can find stopping points in between. And as the years go by, you got to put time into it. As the years go mm -hmm. by, you'll learn, okay, when it starts to snow, they're already down at this elevation and I should be hunting this particular spot. But but do some, you know, Google Earth, Onyx Maps and, mm -hmm. and look at those spots they summer. First, find them in the summer. Just take a hiking trip with your family, spend a lot of time glassing, find where the deer are summering, find yeah. where they're feeding. And if you can't get in or, or choose not to archery hunt that area, then when you're rifle hunting, look at the places directly downhill from that. So that's what we have for you. If you have any questions, uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. We're always happy to hear from you guys. So have fun this year, stay safe, and good luck.